systems of equations, and systems of inequalities. First, we'll solve a system of equations by graphing. Here we first graph y is equal to 2x plus 7, and I'm going to graph that in blue. The other line, y equals negative 2x minus 1, I'll, I'll graph in red. Now the important thing for us to remember in the system of equations, the point of intersection is the solution. And I see that it's right there and it appears that it's at x equals negative 2, y equals 3. So we want to make sure that we write the ordered pair to show that we know the solution. We can also solve systems of equations algebraically, and our first algebraic method is called the method of substitution. What I do first is I solve the first equation for x, and I chose x because it has a coefficient of positive 1, whereas y has a 4 or a 2, and this other x has a negative 1. So now that I've chosen to solve for x, you can, x is equal to negative 4y plus 19, which I got by subtracting 4y from both sides. I now substitute it in. And one important point to remember is that this negative requires these parentheses for x equals negative 4y plus 19. And then I will distribute the negative 1 across the group or quantity to get 4y minus 19 plus 2y is equal to 5. As I go through solving, I find that y is equal to 4. So then I plug that back into x equals negative 4y plus 19 and find that x is equal to 3. And this is my ordered pair or solution. I can also solve algebraically using elimination. So in order to do that, I would choose to multiply the first equation by 2. And when I do that, it becomes negative 2x minus 2y equals 10. Combining that with the second equation gives me negative 2x is equal to negative 12. So x is positive 6, which I can plug into my original equation. So that 6 minus y is 5, and y is equal to 1. Sometimes we get special types of systems when we solve. I plan to solve this one by elimination. I multiplied the top equation by 4, and I left this equation the same. When I combined them, all of the variables were eliminated, and I ended up with something that is a true equation, because 0 is equal to 0. This tells me that this solution has infinitely many solutions, and the two lines are basically graphed on top of each other. They're called collinear lines. If I solve this particular system, I might choose to multiply the first equation by negative 2 and get negative 6x minus 2y is equal to negative 12. When I combine them, once again the variables completely disappear, but the equation that I'm left with is not true, it's false, because 0 is not equal to negative 14. This tells me that these two lines are parallel to each other, they will never intersect, and therefore there is no solution. The last thing we learned in this chapter is to solve a system of inequalities, such as this one. When I graph the first inequality, y is less than 1 3rd x plus 4, I've got a dashed line going through a y-intercept of 4 with a slope of up 1 over 3. I have chosen to, to shade below the line because if I try 0, 0, I get 0 is less than 4, which is true. So this is the true area for this particular line. When I when I decide to graph my second inequality, y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 5, it starts down here and goes up 2 and to the left by 1, or down 2 and to the right by 1. I also picked 0, 0 as a test point, and I would get 0 is greater than or equal to 5 
which is true. So that's why the blue shading is here. The important thing to remember is there is an infinite number of solutions in a system of inequalities like where there's double shading. All of the ordered pairs on this boundary, but not on this one, but all the other ordered pairs, and there are an infinite number of them, in the double shaded region. That shows our solution.